Thomas Mitchell, the film's Gerald O'Hara, was one of the most popular character actors of his day and became one of the few who ever won an Oscar, an Emmy, and a Tony Award. Initially, Mitchell had refused to go into films, preferring to remain on Broadway, where he was a leading star. It was not until 1936 that he finally agreed, signing a long-term contract with Columbia Pictures. In 1937, he earned his first Academy Award nomination, playing an alcoholic doctor in The Hurricane, directed by John Ford. The following year, Ford cast Mitchell as yet another alcoholic doctor, this time in his legendary Western, Stagecoach. Your health, Reverend. He's a whiskey drummer. What? In 1939, after only three years in Hollywood, Mitchell was to reach the peak of his success appearing in five of the year's biggest films. In addition to Gone with the Wind and Stagecoach, Mitchell also had important roles in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Only Angels Have Wings, and in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Who's the king here? Mitchell's win of the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for that year for Stagecoach could have just as easily been for any of the others. Throughout the 40s, Mitchell continued to work steadily in films, and in 1945, he reunited with Clark Gable and Victor Fleming for adventure. I'm going to miss you, Harry, never to see your face again. That's fine, much. Let's get aboard. We're sailing. Oh, I'm sailing? I... In 1946, the same year he starred with Olivia de Havilland in The Dark Mirror, Mitchell was to play what was to become one of his most famous roles, that of Uncle Billy in Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. At the end of the 40s, Mitchell returned to stage work, replacing Lee J. Cobb in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman and winning a Tony Award for his performance in the musical Hazel Flag. While in New York, Mitchell also began working regularly on live television and was honored with an Emmy Award for Best Television Actor of 1952. Even after being diagnosed with the cancer that would eventually take his life, Mitchell continued to work nearly nonstop all the way up to his death in 1962.